Hi. I'm a dude who plays these dumb hack and flash games way too much. I wrote a bizarre gameplay with you, sort of. And you might have seen me around making an ass out of myself, offering advice to people where they didn't ask for it because I'm dumb. Woo. I'm gonna make a hopefully short tutorial video on a system within the single Kapasara games that a lot of people don't really know about, so here we go. Move usage. What is move usage? It's a hidden system in the games introduced in Bazaar 3, my assumption as a way to highlight the new comet system that the game introduced to the series. It functions similarly between 3 and 4, though in 4 it, along with several aspects of the game, were refined to make it more consistent and polished. It's easiest to show it, but just a brief description wouldn't hurt. At its most basic interpretation, it works like this. If you had used a move three times in a row, the enemy will automatically escape the combo via blocking, parrying, evading, or even using a bizarre art of their own. The game only remembers the last three moves you've done, and it's more related to the instance of the button being pressed and not the amount of hits performed, so multi-hit moves more or less are only considered one move. This is what allows someone like Yukimura to infinitely do his Dyreka, provided you have the stamina and speed. For anyone familiar with Devil May Cry 3 and 4, you can almost say it's pretty similar to the style system in those games, except where using a move would stop or drop the style ranking itself, the enemy would escape here. And similarly, it can be abused, but that comes later, so examples I guess. I'm going to show using one move three times in a row with Kenshin, using his triangle. One, two, three. As you can see, it hit normally twice, but on the third time, they were able to block. The combo essentially ended at this point, uh, and this is where the game, only remembering the last three moves, comes into play. Let's try that again with a small addition. I used two moves afterwards, and they were still able to recover. This shows that it's still tracking the move, but when it introduced a fourth move, however, The oldest move, in this case his triangle, is forgotten completely, allowing me to use it again. Using a fourth move to overwrite the oldest to give you functional access to it again is the core of comma creation within Sengoku Pasara, learning restrictions so you can utilize your freedoms. There are some additional things to mention with this, however, such as what moves specifically are tracked. Well, the square string, your air and ground being counted as the same thing, and they're longer, so there's a different rule applied to them that I'll get to in a moment. He's jumping triangle with a different move that's tracked. It's called square, in most cases, which also has something I have to talk about in a little bit. Uh, his triangle, obviously. Well, anyone's triangle. His direction. Anyone's direction plus triangle. R1. L1 plus triangle, even though this is a counter with tension, you can kind of do it. That counts as one move, L1 plus square, and R2. A max of nine total moves that anyone can use, only four of which you need to make a simple loop. And with a game like this, where you have two characters, each character is counted separately, so go crazy. Because it's on a per button basis, all three R2s count as the same thing, which unfortunately means there's no sick infinites involving three R2s and one other move, which I guess I can sort of showcase. That hit, and this should make him block. Yes. This also means that for characters like Kanbei or Kasuya, for example, who have an R1 in the air that use their direction plus triangle animation, it's still only tracked as R1. There are also negative aspects of this, where characters like Masayuki or Matsu, who can summon characters to fight with them, notably Yoromaru, Matsu's bear, count as an R2 use every single time they hit, which can really ruin your combo routes. Now hold square. Some characters like Kenjin here, they have a move that tracks all its own, and that's pretty great. Other characters like Soren, for example, or someone like Ayasu or Magoichi, whose hold square are just charged versions of their normal art, uh, moves anyway, it's not tracked on its own. Which, I guess, is a nice transition to the rules on square strings. As square strings are longer sequence of moves, if enemies recovered after only three hits, they would be garbage. Instead, they count as their own move within move usage, 
but you can use them 10 total times before enemies react negatively. To be redundant, hitting with the square attack an 11th time would allow enemies to break free. And the hold squares are counted all the same. Well, within these. Uh, so, I guess I'll try to hit. Oh, this one's two. It's eight, nine, oh. I probably should have counted something else before that, but that's fine. I should mention that Koduro has a weird case where his hold square is, I believe, glitched. And it's counted as the move he used before it. So a triangle and to hold a square were kind of triangle being twice, and it's not even always reset when things would be reset normally. I guess I'll be kind of slow and go and block. Yeah, ten uses, eleven to start blocking. It kind of works well since no character has more than ten hits. The longest being uh, Murashige in his lightning form. His square string, starting from a dash, is 10 hits total, which is just there before it would you know, ruin everything, which is, it's fine. Um, please note that beyond using a fourth move, usage tracking is reset after parries from either party, or if you wait 10 seconds after the last move was used without it being used again. Some moves, though, aren't tracked at all, so I guess I should mention them. Kenshin has... I mean... I guess you're sort of saying that some moves just aren't tracked, like there's not really a reason for it. Well, you could say there's a reason. Kitchen has one within his air dash, and moves like this that don't really have a button within the game to be tracked, he won't be tracked, so he can just do this forever if he wants. There are also some glitch moves, like for example Madabe's dash attack, which can be really tedious to loop over and over, that's not tracked at all. Sasuke's Shadow clones um, aren't tracked, so you can do some really serious shenanigans with his personal description. And some characters like Iyasu, for some reason, his triangle charge punch isn't tracked when you cancel his evade with it. And weirdly enough, once you if you use that a series of times in a row, and then you use his neutral version, it'll act like you've been doing it all along. Another move that's not tracked are unblockables. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. Nope. If I could do it uh, more easily, it, this is sort of what made uh, Kenshin so strong and broken in Otage, in a game where the system exists for an alleged polished objectively jank way, so it, he was able to combo max difficulty opponents with really only three moves. So I, I guess I can try this. You can kind of see it, but within Utage, he could use his counter into direction plus triangle, into counter, then R2, then counter, and you repeat that until death. It's not the easiest thing to do anymore, nor is it really needed, but it was what Kenshin did in the game. Other unblockables could include Toshie's just frame um, first R2 attack, Yoshiaki's counter, Ashikaga's first R2, and technically even Yoshihiro's one hit KO move. Uh, I guess as an additional thing, ally moves aren't tracked at all. So while R1 would normally normally be tracked, I'll show an example with it. Uh, if you tag out just before it hits, it counts as the ally doing it. So there's no limit on how many times you can do it. Additionally, enemies that are stunned or if you activate max style mode, they won't react whatsoever. At least while those states are still occurring. Uh, hmm. I might be able to get this to work once this mode ends, but there's also a little dumb thing where uh, if one move from one character hits multiple times and you're able to act while it's happening and you do other moves while it's going on, they'll act like you've been hit three times with it. So, he'll be being hit by the Abrello Zabi, the R1, Dash, R1, Dash and R1 again, he should recover. So that's sort of more or less anything. I sort of started rambling near the end, but hey, if you made it this far, I guess kind of thanks for watching, even though it was really dumb. Ooh.